Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we will look at IFRS 16 that deals with leases. This topic is covered in international accounting course, the CPA exam, as well the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. Life is too short. Let's get to know each other. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lecture. Please like my videos. Just click on the like button. It helps tremendously. Share them. Put them in playlists. Let the world know about them. If you're benefiting, if you're listening to me, it means other people might benefit as well. So share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram as I'm trying to grow my following to reach more people. This is my Facebook and this is my website. On my website, you will find a link you can have to um, contribute if you'd like to support, donate to the channel. Also on my website, I often have offers. Right now, CPA is offering $1,000 off of the Becker Bundle CPA. It's a limited, it's unlimited access. You, in other words, you can have the course as long as you need to. Although you may not be, you not, you may not be studying for the exam now, you can take advantage of their 10,000 multiple choice hundreds of hours of lectures, exercises, and CPA simulations. Now, you don't have to buy the whole thing. You can buy parts of the exam. Also, if you decided to buy, Becker does offer free financing, so you can make payments. If you're considering the CPA exam, this is the best course you can have. Let's talk about leases. So we're going to talk a little bit about operating leases, just as a background discussion, which is operating leases technically don't exist anymore, but I want to talk about the operating leases as an introduction to our discussion. But before we proceed, you're not going to like this as always, I have a link in the description below. And leases is covered in my Intermediate Accounting Chapter 21. So if you go into my, to my Intermediate Accounting Chapter 21, and I have more than 10 lectures, 10 plus lectures that cover lease leases, this topic. So I'm going to be maybe spending 30, 25 to 30 minutes in this lecture. That's not enough. This is not an intermediate accounting course. This is an international accounting course. The assumption here is you know what leases are and we are building on that knowledge to illustrate the difference between US GAAP and IFRS. Okay, I just want to let you know that's the case. So what is a lease? Let's talk about a lease first. A lease is a contract, basically, it's a lease agreement, it's a contract that conveys to LSC the right to use the asset for a period of time in exchange for consideration paid to the asset owner, the lessor. So think about you want to buy a car. This is the car dealer. The car dealer is the lessor. And if you are buying the car, you are the lessee. You are the lessee if you're buying the car. The lessor is the dealer. The lessor is going to hand you the key. Okay, so it's a contract between someone who's buying the car and the dealer. The dealer is the lessor. The lessor retain legal title to the asset. Now, originally, here's what used to happen. This is what we're going to talk about operating leases. Accounting model treated such contract as mutually and executed at signing. What does it mean mutually and executed? It means it, merely signing a lease does not obligate the lessee to record the lease liability on the balance sheet for the future lease payment. So what, what they, what, the way they used to construct the uh, contract is mutually and executed. It means there shouldn't be any liability because no obligation, no liability should be accounted for in the future. Instead, the lessee, the buyer of the, buyer of the car, accounts for these payments as rent expense. So every time the lessee makes a payment it's considered a rent expense these type of leases that don't exist anymore they're called operating lease so an operating lease is when you treat your payment as rent expense now why would you treat your payment as rent expense because you did not meet the other qualification which we'll talk about the qualification to be not to be an operating lease why because the le the, the lease is mutually and executed at signing so it's designed in a way to be treated as an operating lease so operating lease, what happened is it resulted in many abuses. And what are the abuses? The main abuse is off balance sheet financing. What does that mean? So the operating lease, you bought a car or you bought a building or you bought a warehouse or a piece of equipment and you signed the lease. Technically, what you did is you are borrowing money. The lease is technically a loan. But since you treat it as an operating lease, you don't have a loan. All that you have is an expense. 
every time you make a payment it's a rental payment you you make a payment your debit expense your credit cash as a result is your liabilities your the lease is technically is a liability but it's not recorded so it's an off balance sheet financing so operating lease would allow the company to have a loan a liability without recording that liability so companies commonly structure lease agreement to make them eligible for operating lease accounting so they will make the contract in a way they will draft the contract in a way to meet the operating lease in other words to fail other criterias to make it something other than operating lease thereby avoiding to recognize lease related debt in their balance sheet so this is the background so now we understand that the operating lease is was the operating lease was good for the company because you did not have to record the liability but that's no longer the case so ifrs 16 what happened is was enacted in 2016 it's in response to the problems inherited in the operating lease model. So IFRS 16 now require all leases to be accounted for as a finance lease model. It doesn't matter how you structure the agreement. When you sign the agreement, we're going to consider it executory lease. We're going to consider it as an asset and as a liability. Under this model, signing a lease triggers the balance sheet recognition of both the right of use asset generally term leasehold asset outside the US which is the asset and the corresponding lease liability so simply put once you sign a lease it doesn't matter how you drafted that lease as soon as you sign it you have to debit an asset and you have to credit a corresponding liability now the asset in the US is called in the US it's called ROU right of use outside the US since this is an international accounting course they call it leasehold asset so you debit an asset, you debit an asset, and you credit the liability, and it will be equal to the present value of the lease payment because the le you discount the lease payment just like any other liability. You find the present value of the lease, you, you find the present value of the liabilities, and that's your liability. Okay. Then once you have the asset, guess what? You're going to depreciate the asset. You're going to depreciate the right of use over the lease term. So you're going to depreciate this leasehold asset. How, how are you going to depreciate it? Either over the shorter of the useful life in the lease term. Now, if it's reasonably certain that the lease will obtain ownership of the asset at the end of the lease, then you will go over the expected life of the asset. So some leases at the end of the lease, they hand you the key. It's yours. If that's the case, then you can depreciate the asset over the li life of, of the asset rather than the shorter of the lease or the asset. The finance lease model, which is the new model, account for the lease obligation in a manner similar to a home loan. Basically, you have a home loan. When you make a payment, they are a portion. They are separated between interest, expense, and the reduction in the loan. So every time you make a cash payment, part of the cash payment is considered interest, expense, and part of it goes toward the principal amount, the loan, using the effective interest rate method using the effective interest rate method. Also, IAS 36, which is the impairment of asset, apply to those type of assets, apply to the right of use or the leasehold asset, just like you have an asset, regular asset. IFRS was approved in 2016 and takes effect in 2019, okay? Let's take a look at an example to see how this works. Suppose that Speedy Delivery Service signed a three-year lease contract for 10 years delivery van on January 1st, year one, okay? Now, if Speedy purchased the van outright, it would have to pay $30,000 per vehicle. Each vehicle has an economic useful life of eight years. All right? So, for simplicity, let's assume that the contract obligate the company to make an annual payment, although that's not true because you make monthly payment, but it doesn't matter. An annual lease payment of $60,000 at the end of each year, okay, for December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So you're going to be making $60,000 payment for those 10 new delivery truck. We will assume that speedy borrowing rate is 8%. Under the assumption, the present value of the lease payment, which speedy is committed, is 154626 and this is based on the discounting the payment to the present value using 8%, discounting the annuity. The annuity is 60,000, and equal to three, eight, um, I equal to eight, and you go to the present value of ordinary annuity. Okay, you'd use the stable multiplied by the factor, so the present value is 154,626. Now, if we were using the old method, if we we're using the old method, we would have, have 
we would not have this lease. We would have an operating lease, which would not have an asset and which would not have a liability. Okay, let's keep going. Under IS-17, lease resembling Speedy are generally accounted for under the operating lease method. So IS-17 is the old rule. So IFRS-16 replaced this IAS-17. Okay, so we would use the old rules because it would have met a, a the operating lease. This is because the lease term of three years is substantially shorter than the van useful life. Because... <clears throat> Let's assume, we're going to assume the useful life of the van is 10 years. So 3 out of 10, it represents only 30% of their life. And this is one of the criteria not to be an operating lease. You have to have the, the lease life has to be at least 75%. 75%. I believe, I don't, I don't know the exact percentages yet. I believe it's 75%. 75%. 30% you, you would say this is an operating lease. Okay. But it doesn't matter now whether you said it's an operating or a financing. Under the operating lease method, Speedy would record no right of use or liability at signing. During the lease term, Speedy would simply recognize a rent expense of 60000 every year. That's not the case anymore. Under IFRS 16, we would have debit an asset. Delivery van leasehold, this is an asset. 154.626, and we will credit a liability, an obligation, a liability. Okay. Under the old rules, this entry will not exist. We will not debit an asset. We will not debit a liability. All what we do at the end of every year, we pay 60000 we debit an expense, and we credit cash. Okay. Now, because we have an asset, the finance lease would require Speedy to recognize periodic depreciation on the leased asset. Normally, with the useful life set equal to the length of the lease contract, it's three years. So we're going to take the amount of the asset divided by three, and every year we will debit 51542 for depreciation expense. We will credit accumulated depreciation for the same amount to book depreciation. So just basically it's an asset. Then when we make the lease payment, we will debit interest expense <clears throat> 12371 Okay. We will debit ob lease obligation 47. Uh, 47,630 and we'll credit cash 60,000. I believe this should be 70, not 12,370. So you might be asking, how did we come up with this figure? Well, it's the liability, the beginning balance of the liability times 8%. Let me show you. So this way you know where this number coming from. So if we take... <clears throat> 154,626, which is the liability, times 0 0.08. This is the interest expense, 12,370. 12,370. Then we would, reduce, we would reduce this liability by 47,630, and we will credit cash for 60,000. Then obviously the following payment will be different. So this is the schedule. So this is the first payment. The second payment, when we book the second payment, we would credit cash, also 60000 Interest expense is... Interest expense is 8000 This is year two. 8560000 8560 And the loan, the obligation is debited, 51000 440. So we have more, less of interest expense and we are contributing more to the loan. Then the third payment will pay, you know, it's again, less interest component, more to the loan because the principal is going down. Also, this is the depreciation expense computation. This is the interest expense per year. This is the total, okay, between the two. So notice we have interest expense and we have depreciation expense. We have interest expense and depreciation expense. We have interest expense and depreciation expense, interest expense and depreciation expense. If you notice, under the operating lease, if we're treating this as an operating lease, we would have debited 60, 60, 60. In total, 180. If we are treating it as a finance lease, which is the new the new method, finance lease, those are all total expenses, 63,912, 60,102, 55,986, the total also 180. So notice the total expense is the same, whether it's, it's a lease under IFRS, which is under the IFRS, or lease under the IAS 16. The total is the same. 
However, under IFRS, we have an interest component and we have a depreciation component. Under the IAS 17, it was only rent expense. But the main difference I want you to remember to, to pay attention to under IFRS 16, we have a liability. We recorded a liability. We recorded a liability on the books. Here, here we have no liability. We did not have a liability on the book. Now let's compare IFRS 16 to ACS 842, which is the US standard. Now you have to understand that ACS 842. 842 preserve the distinction between an operating and a financing. So under the US standard, we still have an operating lease. However, although we have an operating lease, the difference now is we, we, do, we, do, we do record an asset and a liability initially. Okay, although it's an operating lease, but we still have that category. Okay, so let's take a look at the criteria that make the, the lease as not an operating lease, which is a finance lease. Okay. Okay, in fact, the standard classification criteria are virtually identical to that used by the U.S. accountant for many years. So, so the standard, the way GAAP and IFRS look at, if, is this an operating lease or a finance lease, the standard are the same. So they look at the following. And you have to meet one of these criteria. The lease term transfer ownership of the asset to the lessee by the end of the lease term. If this is, if this criteria is met, if we say in the lease that at the end of the lease, you'll get the asset, it becomes a non-operating, it becomes a finance lease. If the lessee has the option to purchase the lease at a price less than the market, we call it a bargain purchase, then guess what? You don't have an operating lease, you have a finance lease. You have only have to meet one of those. One, the lease term is for the major part of the lease asset economic life. Now, they don't define what's the major life, but anything above 75%, it's called for the major life. So rem let's go back to those vans. Assuming we, we have the lease for three years, we divide three years by 10, that's 30% of their life, okay? Under US standard, we'll call this, it doesn't meet the finance lease here it, it, because you know 30% is less than 75. Again, they don't tell you what's the major life, but anything above 75%, we can go with it, okay? So if it's more than 70, if, if you own an asset, more than 75% of its life, then technically you own it. It cannot be considered an operating lease. The present value of the minimum lease payment at the inception of the lease equal to substantially all the fair value of the lease asset. Here, what they do is 90% is the is the usually the number that you can use. So when you compute the present value of the payments, if the present value equal to 90%, if the present value equal to 90% of fair value, then basically you bought the asset because you're going to be paying 90% of the price of the asset. Therefore, you own the asset. And the fifth criteria is the lease is of specialized nature such that only the lessee can use it without any major modification. Simply put, you 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 bought a lease. You leased the le you leased an asset, and no one else can use it. Guess what? You bought it because no one else can use it. It was made for you. Therefore, you technically bought it. What are we saying with these five criteria? You just have to meet one out of five to classify the lease as non-operating. To be an operating lease, it has to fail all of them. To be to at least be considered an operating lease, it has to fail all these five criteria. In other words, it doesn't meet criteria one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't meet any of them, then it's called an operating lease. Although it's an operating lease, now in the US, we still debit an asset and credit a liability, but we treat it differently for the payment. See my other lectures. For, for, for the uh, international standard, it doesn't matter. Operating lease don't exist anymore. Okay. In the US, they kept that criteria because the way you make payments, it's going to be different. Okay. Instead of eliminating the operating lease category, the U.S. achieves an effect similar to that of IRF, IFRS 16 by requiring lease assets in lease liability to be recorded for both operating and financing lease and finance leases. So again, although it's although it's we're going to call it operating lease, but we're going to record an asset and record the liability. Okay. So applying the same example for, under U.S. GAAP, we would have still debit an asset, we would still credit a liability. Although in the U.S. we call this an operating lease. Now the payments, the way we do the payments are a little bit different. Nevertheless, it's an operating lease. The difference lies in the income statement treatment. The U.S. standard requires a straight line expense that spread total lease payment evenly over the lease term. So basically every year we will debit rent expense, credit cash, 
I would say if you really want to learn US GAAP, go to my standard, go to my, uh, not standard, go to my chapter 21 in intermediate accounting, okay? Because it's a little bit more complicated than this entry. But basically, you're going to debit expense of 60000 But you will see how in detail. Let's recap IFRS versus GAAP. This is your expenses under under US GAAP, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000. Under IFRS, you're gonna expense 63,912, 60,000, 102, and 55,968. In total, obviously, they equal to each other, but under IFRS, you expense more early on. So it's more conservative, more conservative treatment because you expense more early on. Now, when they were developing the IFRS 16, they coordinated with FASB, okay? And that's why FASB and A, A, A SC are very, very similar, very similar. But FASB chose to modify the operating lease method rather than eliminate it. So under US GAAP, we still have operating lease, but it's technically treated like a finance lease. But that's gonna, you know, that's a divergence between US GAAP and IFRS, okay? So the US retention of the operating lease category in introduced presentational differences. Now, when you, when you, when you discuss the lease in the notes, you're going to discuss it differently. IFRS 16 mandate either a separate presentation or footnote disclosure of leasehold asset as well as a separate reporting of depreciation and interest expense. So this is why you have what IFRS want you to disclose. In the cash flow statement, the portion of the lease payment allocated to principal reduction is a financing outflow. So this is when it comes to the cash flow statement. Remember the payment part of it, principal part of it, interest. The principal is considered financing. That's how you're financing the company. The portion allocated to the interest, it's either operating or financing. Usually it's operating, depending on how the entity elected under IAS 7, which we'll see in the statement of cash flow next. So remember, you make a cash payment. Remember under IFRS, the cash payment is split between interest and principal. The principal is financing the principal on the cash flow statement. The interest, it's gonna either operating or, or or financing, depending if the asset ready or not ready for its intended use, okay? Under the US standard, the lessee must provide balance sheet or footnote disclosure of operating and finance lease assets and liability. Obviously, those are the disclosure. In contrast, the IFRS lessee must present the lease expense as a single operating expense. They should present lease payment as operating cash flow unless the payment are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use. In that case, it's investing. We just told you this a second earlier. I don't know why I put this twice, okay? Well, we'll talk about the cash flow in a separate recording, but this is basically an overview of leases, IFRS versus US GAAP. Once again, if you're interested in more learning about US GAAP, which is very similar to IFRS, go to my chapter 21, Intermediate Accounting. I will have the link in the description below. If you're studying for your exam, study hard, Good luck and see you on the other side of success.